know, I am naturally obsessive, hopefully on a less than psychological disturbing way, but I do tend to get very enthusiastic. And actually enthusiastic is a word I much prefer. It literally means infected by the gods. A lot of my obsessions actually grew up around a reaction to touring and the tedium of it. Reading had um, fascinated me since grade school, really, and I can always remember going to the library on every Tuesday after school and get, getting a new load of books and all that. But um, I never really applied any of that into writing at that time because at age 13 I started drum lessons and that became the all-consuming obsession. All other interests went by the board, schoolwork went down the drain, there was only drums. And then when I started touring in the 70s with the band, I immediately found it extremely tedious because we would have maybe a 20 minute set and the rest of the time was basically just sitting around waiting or you know, sitting on airplanes or whatever. So I turned to reading at that time, rediscovered it in my early 20s. So I started reading frantically, but kind of methodically, trying to gather all kinds of fiction, trying to fill in the gaps in my um, education, and a lot of nonfiction from history, philosophy, geography, natural science. And out of the, the cloistered kind of travel that a rock tour is, I became interested in adventure travel. And also I started carrying a bicycle on the road with me and on days off I would go out riding in the countryside. So that got me curious about adventure travel and that played back into writing. I would guess around 85 I went to China on a bicycle trip, my first adventure travel. And some, something came together at that time because I decided I'm not taking a camera, I'm going to try to capture this journey in words. So after that China trip I wrote the first of um, a journal of the of the uh, my experiences on it. I traveled then to East Africa after that, and uh, toured around the animal, uh, the national parks, and the wildlife, and uh, climbed Mount Kilimanjaro and wrote that one up. Probably about six books that I published privately, just small editions for friends and all that. Till 20 years later, uh, in 1996, published my first book, which was about cycling in West Africa, and uh, gathered the experiences ma mainly of a trip around the country of Cameroon and into war-torn Chad at the time. One nice comment that a few friends have made, I'm really glad you made that trip so I don't have to. But that, that's where my taste for travel, which I've always loved since childhood, and then adventure travel took it up a notch, and then writing came into it, that's what I wanted to write about. So after uh, The Mast Rider, then I had certain reverses in life that uh, led to the next book, which is about a motorcycle journey around um, North America from the Arctic to Central America, Central America and Belize. 55,000 miles of motorcycling and reflection that uh, led me into a, a new kind of life. And then my one kind of true, a musical autobiography, I call it, traveling music. I was uh, driving from LA to Big Bend National Park in Texas and listening to music along the way and thinking about what I wanted to write next. And as I drove, I'm thinking, well, this is a story, the music that I'm listening to, why I chose to listen to it, what it represents to me and my past and my life. And I decided to weave that into, it's really a long song form, this book of verses, choruses and, and bridges and so on. And then I'd always wanted to capture touring life, talk about adventure travel and talk about the, a deep experience that I really wished I could share with people and have tried various ways in songs and in prose over the years. And finally, I decided to fully document a tour, which was Russia's 30th anniversary tour. Rocho was uh, a, a, a concert tour by motorcycle, which I thought was a, a, or a landscape with drums, which I thought was another interesting play on the common title. But after that, uh, I had the same sort of uh, crisis about what do I want to write about now, uh, having captured so much. And then I thought, well, I'll just take a break and write short pieces. So that I found after about uh, three or four years, suddenly I had a book's worth of stories. And that became the next volume. This was the special limited edition with the drummer's bass drum crest on the front. And it became a book uh, far and away that included stories that ranged so far from not just motorcycle travels and not just drumming stories, but um, cross country skiing up in Quebec and snowshoeing up in Quebec. They're all my adventures, let's face it, musical adventures, um, touring adventures. They're, they're all something that I wish to share with others. My uh, two-wheeled obsession really began around the mid 80s. Started using a bicycle to travel around the city. And then we were out on tour in probably 84, a day off in Salt Lake City. I thought, I want to go for a bicycle ride. So I found a bicycle store open on a Sunday and uh, then started riding every day after that and then started building up into greater distances. And then around the mid 90s, that transferred into motorcycling. And I started riding, having always wanted to and said I would uh, ride a motorcycle when I was grown up. And by my mid 40s, I figured I was as grown up as I was going to get. So I started riding and again, my ambition 
kept uh, increasing where I wanted to ride greater distances, farther places. So in, in the mid-90s, I started uh, riding uh, in the off-season adventures up to the Arctic and uh, around Mexico that spring and then around um, Europe down to Tunisia and North Africa into the Sahara. And then around that time had the idea that, hmm, this might work on tour. That if I traveled on my own and had a, a bus and a trailer, I could carry a, a motorcycle and ride every day, ride to the shows, ride between the shows. So it, it became a total escape from the combination of tedium and circus that is rock touring. And also what an entree into the wonderful world of the national parks of, uh, of North America, the scenery, the small towns, and, and immediately I gravitated toward the small roads. Again, GPS came along, was a huge addition to my touring repertoire because suddenly I could trace the tiniest little roads on the map. But every day is that kind of adventure. And when I get a new itinerary, I don't look at where the concerts are. I look at the days off between them, you know, the, the what I can do on that day. It's not one big happy adventure. It, when I get up on the bus in the morning and roll my bike out of the trailer, there's no place I'd rather ride than home. But the point is I have a job to do that day and a place to show up and work. So that being the reality, how can I best make use of that day? And touring life famously can be very cloistering and very alienating. And a lot of musicians over the year have suffered from that in different ways. When you travel the way I do, that's never a danger. You know, I'm in gas stations every day. I'm in diners, I'm in motels. I'm stock talking to people at rest areas. Sure, I show up at a rock concert and play in front of 10,000 people or whatever. But in between those times, I'm a guy, you know, riding in the rain or riding in 150 degree, 15 degree heat and stopping at the gas station and looking for a motel, you know, the kind of regular things that, uh, that regular people do. Drums and cymbals in general, it might be said that the uh, drums are the verbs and subjects of the sentence. Uh, bass drum, snare drum being typical fundamentals for rock patterns. And then what I would call the connective tissue um, is the hi-hat and the ride cymbal. They have a beautiful contrast to each other, I think, in terms of the expression, the tightness of control. Sometimes in a song, you can have a nicely uh, controlled verse and then boom, open up to a really nice wide um, washy effect, syncopated with bells, notes on the bow. Sometimes it can be quite retiring, so again, what you notice are the subjects and verbs, the, the hard words of the, of the sentence, and then the wash of the ride just connects that together in a textural way that's very nice. I always think of this ride that we started when I visited the uh, Sabian factory in Medukta, New Brunswick, so I think late 2003. Uh, the first thing we did sitting in the vault was put up a plain gray pie of metal and then explored different treatments of the lathing and the hammering hat on it. So with Mark Love, the uh, metallurgical guru, he would keep going away and coming back with different ones and we'd try them and discuss them and eventually arrived at the combination of lathing top and bottom and the hand hammered bell that gave all of the qualities that I like so much because I like that washy character with nice definition on the uh, the sticking on the bow, but especially across the bell where I'll often have the shoulder of the stick there for quite a percussive implication. And you can play fills on the, the bell of a cymbal really with a little careful placement of where they lie. The uses that I put it to that we can look at sometimes in different ride patterns and what I've learned over time, my studies with uh, Peter Erskine where he was very emphatic about the type of ride that I had to have and the type of approach and sticking and the laser limitations and so on, which in my type of more dynamic rock playing um, has to grow from that, but it was a wonderful place to start from a, the expressive ability of a ride symbol. Or if I do on uh, riding on double surfaces where I'll, I'll use uh, a pattern that goes between the ride symbol and the china up here, for example, or between the ride and uh, the X hat here, or even sometimes I'll have my left hand over here on the hi hat and be accenting on the upbeats on the bell, for example, the pattern and uh, subdivisions that we'll look at. For me, having developed the instrument, that piece of the drum set that was exactly to my specifications was a big part of developing the whole uh, Paragon line of, of equal expressions in terms of crash symbols and effect symbols. 